producer's adaptation of the award-winning stage play, which was itself based on the 1968 movie. The story, if you don't know it and if you don't, where have you been, is a Broadway producer, Max Bialystok, who teams up or basically bullies a shy retiring accountant, Leo Bloom, into co-producing a flop with him on the basis that if they get more investment in than the thing cost and then they have a huge flop, they will be able to keep all their money from their investors and from the tax man. The only thing is they have to find the worst play in history. The thing is, the original was great. The original was an almost pitch-perfect rendition of a bad taste movie. I mean, everyone who's seen it remembers it. And it's one of those things that's immensely quotable. The idea of getting this play, which is called Springtime for Hitler, a gay romp with, uh, Hitler, with Adolf and Eva, it, written by this lunatic neo-Nazi uh, playwright, Franz Liebling, and full of these terrible, terrible lines like, I leave you, I leave you, now leave me alone. And, uh, of course, the famous song, Springtime for Hitler... And uh, Winter for Poland and France. I mean, it's in such bad taste that only Mel Brooks could have got away with it. And it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, the film is really a masterpiece. The stage play apparently is also a masterpiece, particularly with Nathan Lane in the lead. And if you were following the, the newspapers about this, I didn't see the stage play. Uh, Richard Dreyfus was going to take the lead role here and then at the very last minute dropped out because, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I think by his own admission, it was that he felt that the role was kind of insurmountable. And Nathan Lane then stepped into the breach. So people here... In, uh, in in the UK got to see Nathan Lane doing it on stage and those people who did see him doing it said it was absolutely titanic and it won loads and loads of awards and it was described by one paper as like the most pleasure you could possibly have in the theatre. Now, taking it from there back onto film and I have to say that it has lost most of what it apparently gained on stage. The film is directed by the woman who directed the stage play and it is filmed exactly as if doing a record of the stage play. Michael Caine once uh, did this masterclass about the difference between stage acting and film acting and television acting. And basically what it came down to was that stage acting is all to do with opening your eyes and big gestures and film acting and TV acting is to do with keeping everything much smaller. Well, as you could hear from that clip, there's none of that keeping it smaller in terms of the film, in terms of the film, this new film as opposed to the original film. Everything is delivered as if being delivered to... Uh, you know, a full house audience. All the camera moves are huge and swirling and clunky and there are great big gestures and big gurning facial expressions that would all work if you were watching it on stage. But unfortunately, you're not watching it on stage. You're watching it on film and it's almost as if the director, who incidentally has not made a film before and I think actually at the moment has no grasp of the cinematic medium, just hasn't wanted to mess around with what was a hit. Now... The thing that it reminded me most of, and this is a real shame, is that there is a, there's a, a film of Stephen Burkhoff's stage play of Decadence. If you ever saw Decadence on stage, it was just titanically good. On film, it was one of the worst things ever made. Now, the producers of the film is not a terrible, terrible film. It's just not very good. All the things that are good about it are all the things that were always good about the film in the first place. The extraordinarily bad taste conceit, which is handled so perfectly. The 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 very idea of it, which ends up with our two characters, of course, accidentally creating a hit because they put on something that's so awful, it actually starts to become satirically brilliant. Well, all those things are in the Mel Brooks original because when Mel Brooks directed it, he directed it as a film and he demonstrated that he had incredible comic timing. Some of the performances, well, Nathan Lane is kind of OK because he sort of gets away with that big, larger-than-life performance. Matthew Broderick, who I've liked very much in the past and is apparently great on stage, just looks to me wooden and awkward and difficult and somehow suddenly ill at ease with the medium. Then, of course, we have Will Ferrell, who... I'm just not a Will Ferrell fan. I don't think he manages to do the gag about the mad neo-Nazi playwright who in the film is just this hysterical character because he's so obnoxious and so insane and so crazy. The Will Ferrell one, it's just, it's an awful lot of shrieking. So there are gags in it that are funny. There are songs in it that are funny. Springtime for Hitler is just a funny song. I mean, this, it's almost impossible to do that badly. And on the basis of this, what we effectively have for the archives is a record of the stage show. But as a piece of filmmaking, I have to tell you, it's a bit of a duffer. And that's a real shame. Where would would they have positioned this on Boxing Day with with high expectations? Is it traditionally a good a good place to release? Well, something? it's a difficult time. I mean, Boxing Day. Forgive me because you brought it up. You know, The Exorcist was released on Boxing Day in America, and there's a certain point when you're you're coming towards. Uh, 
Oscar nomination time. You release at this time of year. In America, you release at this time of year to get all those things like cl uh, fresh in people's minds just before voting. Yeah. So yes, and on the basis of the, the stage play, I think they would have high expectations of it. But I've got to tell you, it's not a good film. It's, it's a great film original which made a great stage play which then subsequently made a not very good film despite the very best efforts of the cast who are playing it for all it's worth like that. Very good.